Hello, everyone. Welcome to First Church of the Nazarene. We're really, really glad you're here. Um, it's going to be a beautiful evening. We're going to start off with some worship, so if you can stand with us. So for our first song, we're going to have to practice a little bit. So whatever I say, you repeat, okay? But if you only want to do it once, you have to do it loud. Ready? Put your hands together. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Our God saves. Eh. I can't really hear you because uh, the, the guitar is really loud and the drums are going to make it louder. So I'm going to need you a little louder than that, like you're at a Patriots game. Ready? Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I got saved. That was pretty good. All right, now I need you even louder for this part. Ready? Pants together. You ready? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Our God saves. Oh, hallelujah. Highest praises. Oh, hallelujah. We give thanks. I'm grateful for who you are and all you Thank you, Lord, for saving me. 
to the desperate eyes and reaching hands to the suffering and the weak to the ones the world has cast aside where you are be spent on me in vain. Let this life be used for change. I will go, I will go, I will go, Lord, send me to the world, to the lost, to the poor and hungry. Take everything I am, I'm clean within your hands. I will go, I will go set me. I want to live for you. Go where you lead me. I want to follow you. I want to live for you. Go where you lead me. I want to follow you. you go where you lead me i want to follow you i want to live for you go where you lead me i want to follow you i will go i will go i will go lord send me to the world to the lost to the poor and Take everything I am, I'm clean within your hands. I will go, I will go, send me. I will go, I will go, I will go, I will go, Lord, send me to the world, to the lost, to the poor, and call me. Take everything I am, I'm clean within your hands. I will go. I will go, send me. I will go, I will go, send me. I'ma tell the world, tell them, I'ma tell it everywhere I go, tell the world, tell them, yeah, I'm a billboard, tell the world, tell them, I'm broadcasting like a radio, tell the world you want to know, I'm brand new. I, I know one thing's true, I don't even be deserved to know you, but I, I'm a witness that you did this and I'm brand new, so I, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna tell the world what they need to know. I say to myself, would you let me go? I tried getting high, but it left me low. You did what they could never do. You cleaned up my soul and give me life. I'm so brand new, and that's all that matters. I, I love you first, but you first love me. In my heart, I cursed you, but you set me free. I gave you no reason to give me new seasons, give me new life, new breathing. But you hung there bleeding, you died for my lies and my cheating, lust and my greeting. What is a man? I shall mindful of him. And what do I have to deserve this loving? I'm make the moment last, holding on to the past. But like a hero in a dream. Christ came and he rescued me. Now I'ma tell the now world. I'ma tell the world. Tell them I'ma tell it everywhere I go. Tell the world. Tell them. Yeah, I'm a 
billboards Tell the world, tell them I'm broadcasting like a radio Tell the world you ought to know I'm doing new Offer you nothing, but your care and kindness keeps coming And your love is so unconditional I get butterflies in my stomach I got the old me in the rear view I got a new me, I got a clear view I was so dead I couldn't hear you Too deep for sin to come near you But you pull me in, you clean me up So take me home, beat me up Before you do this, let me tell the truth Let these folks know that I done seen your love It's everlasting, infinite It goes on and on, you can't measure it Can't quit your life, they can't separate us From the love of God, there's no estimate Face look the same, my friend we erase Won't change, cross ain't the same Love so deep, you suffer and took pain Died on the cross to give me a new name Not like I've seen before, I got a beam and glow Low down and dirty, but you clean me, Lord You adopted me, you keep rocking me I'ma tell the world that ain't nobody stopping me Trying to make them all the sadness Holding on to the past But like a hero in a dream Christ came and he rescued me I'ma tell the world I'ma tell the world Tell them I'ma tell it everywhere I go Tell the world Tell them So therefore Anyone who is in Christ Is a new creation The old has passed away And behold The new has come Now I'ma tell the world I'ma tell the world Tell them I'ma tell it everywhere I go Tell the world Tell them yeah, I'm a billboard, tell the world, tell them I'm broadcasting like a radio, tell the world you want to know. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God, sing it out. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns. From heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome on, God. Our God. Sing it out. our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. From heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Amen. And you may be seated. Testing. Good evening. Welcome tonight. What a beautiful night to be in the house of the Lord. Would you thank Fire Worship? They're our youth group worship team. If you have a teenager at home that's not going to church, Wednesday nights, 6 o'clock here in the sanctuary is youth night. So uh, please uh, feel free to come anytime. Come stay with them. Make sure they get comfortable in church, but find them a place in church. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Fire. Wow. Here we are. I was searching my thoughts and praying about this evening, and God led me to Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling 
on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Any of you and all of you tonight are here because we want to honor Gil, Beth, Zachary, and Matthew. They are people of God. They are servants of God. And you know what I have learned over these 11 years, that they welcome the world with open arms. And if there's anything that brings Christians together, it's a willingness to lay down our lives for those in need. So tonight, we're going to ask God's blessing on our time together. Let's bow our heads. Father God, tonight, we know, God, that you know all things. We know that you have a plan. You know that you will fill New Bedford's loss with others who will be raised up to carry the torch. We will miss them. But you have a plan. And so, Father, tonight as we celebrate these servants of yours, we know, Father God, that you will comfort us. And we will rejoice tonight. We will celebrate what you have done with 11 years of the Parkhurst family. So, Father, we welcome your presence. We know you're already here. You've told us where two or three are gathered in your name. You'd be there in their midst. And Father, the Parkers have done much to unify this city for those who are in need. And we pray, Father, that you will grace us with your presence. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This evening, I would like to introduce to you Major Gilbert, better known as Gil, and Major Beth Ellen, better known as Beth. Zachary and Matthew. Zachary and Matthew, you can stand where you are. We're going to let you sit with your buddies tonight. And Gil and Beth. Gil, would you escort your wife to the platform? Come on, you can do better than that. These are our guests of honor tonight. Yeah, you thought. You thought. (laughs) This is just a representation of a community that is grateful. Tonight we have a list of guests who are going to come and they're going to bring greetings and we're going to begin that list. I'll remind all my guests that uh, we're aiming for two to three minutes apiece. (laughs) So we know how that goes. Beginning tonight with our state representative, Mr. Antonio Cabral. Tony, would you come? Well... Good evening. This is really not a farewell. It's a great New Bedford send-off, right? I mean, right? We're going to send you to a different com- send this family to a different community, but at the same time have an opportunity to say thank you for their service to us in New Bedford. You know, not only we got Major Gilbert, we got the entire family, Major Beth Allen and both kids that attend NCA. You know, the kids here are going to miss hot dog day and donut day, you know? (laughs) Right? Right, guys? On my way here, my daughter, Victoria, was saying, are we going to have hot dog day again or or donut day again? And uh, as Major Gilbert just walked in, assured her that most likely that will continue, right? But, you know, it's uh, on behalf of those that I have the privilege and the honor to representing the city of New Bedford. If they all could be here, they would be here. But they can't. That's why they sent me here. To be here with you and to be with all of you and help celebrate 
this great work that these individuals, this family has done for New Bedford in the last 11 years. You can see the list of folks who are going to say a few words tonight. The partnerships they created uh, throughout the city. It's nice to see Beth Perdue here, also from the Standard Times. It shows how important the work that the neatest, neatest family fund has done also for, for Salvation Army. We really thank you for you being here. I mean, it's not just, she just didn't send someone here, she, she's here. And that's great to see that, that kind of commitment. Because Major Gilbert, Major Beth, Michael is just Beth, and Gil, and Zachary and Matthew, they've given it all to this place. You're going to leave this city and this region a much richer place. And we know the place that you're going to, they're going to feel the same way. Because not only you carry the mission, you live the mission. Not only you came to New Bedford with a mission, you live that mission. You know, I was reading this, the wonderful story in the Standard Times uh, from yesterday's paper. How wonderful it is, the, those Wednesday dinners and those Sunday dinners. You know, to have so many people, I think it was around 70, 75 folks that go every Wednesday and every Sunday. And those are f individuals that have no place else to go. No place else to go and feel like they're having dinner with the family. And Major Gilbert and Major Beth Allen made them feel as part of the family. This is the place you can come, the place you can feel at home and have dinner and enjoy the company. That in itself, besides everything else that they do, that's a tremendous message. It's what's good about New Bedford and that's good of what, what's good about their service to this community. We're gonna miss you, obviously, but we're not going to say farewell, right? We're just going to say in this rich community, and I know you love Portuguese food, right? We're going to send you probably a book with all the recipes, uh, right? So you can cook wherever you're going to be. Uh, but we, you know, depending which background you're from, language is very important, right? We usually, like for example, in Portuguese, we usually don't say adeus, because that's a definite goodbye, right? means we're never going to see you again. We usually say, and it might sound Italian, but the Portuguese also use it, it's the word ciao. Right? Eh? Because we're going to see you again. We want to see you. We want you to come back. We want you, we want you to be, continue to be part of, of this city. Or in French, we don't say adieu. We say au revoir. Eh? There's a reason for that. Or even in English, it's bye, not goodbye. Or in Spanish, right? Hasta, hasta luego. And that's what we're doing here today. It's not a, a farewell, it's a send off, but it's not a goodbye. It's simply until we see you again. And we appreciate that service. So I thought that was appropriate just to mention those words because this is a very diverse com community and I know you know that and I know you have experienced that. And I know you're going to carry that diversity with you to where you're going. And that in itself has enriched also and will enrich, enrich your message and your mission there. Um, I bring on behalf of all the citizens of, of my district in particular a citation from the House of Representatives for the entire family. Not just for you, Major Gilbert <laughs> or Major Beth Allen, but for the whole entire family because this is really a, a family dedication to their job, to their mission, to their work, you know. And, we go, and everybody is gonna miss also Zachary and Matthew here and NCA in particular, right? All their friends, all their, uh, how much they are involved in the school here, uh, they're gonna miss, uh, they're gonna miss the place and the kids here are gonna miss them too. And the partnership you made with, with NCA itself and the commitment for the hot dog days and the donut days, and the kids look forward to that. Uh, but that's just an example of all the partnerships throughout the city and throughout the, throughout the region, throughout, throughout the region. So from all of us, a big thank you, and here we go. Have I known to all that, I, w I only had three minutes, right? <laughs> to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives Office sincere congratulations to Major Gilbert, Major Beth Allen, Zachary 
and Matthew Parkhurst. In recognition of your 11 years of dedicated service to the citizens of Greater New Bedford, and in particular for your contributions through your partnership with the Send the Times Needed Families Program and the many food and clothing distributions you have coordinated. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the, the hope of future good fortune and continued success in all your endeavors. Given this third day of June 2018 at the State House, Boston, Massachusetts, by the speaker, Robert A. Liu, and offered by myself, Tony Cabral. So congratulations on your new mission, and ciao. Thank you, Tony. Now, I've tried my best to, to meet with all of our speakers as they've come in, but I have failed to make connection with Christine Arsenault. Or did you make it here? Ah, wonderful. Thank you. Representing our mayor's office. Christine, is Kat with you? Just no, me today. Just you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Christine Arsenault, and as was just said, I'm sorry to say that Mayor Mitchell could not be with us tonight. I am not the eloquent speaker that he is, but I am honored to be here to speak on behalf and to thank Major Gill and Major Beth for everything that they do for our community. As you all know, the government cannot do it all. We cannot reach all of the physical and spiritual needs and we are blessed, very blessed in our community to have such a strong faith community and such a strong volunteer community that supports our faith community. The work you do is um, immeasurable. We can't thank you enough because we, don't, we can't even imagine what would happen if we didn't have people like you and your supporters and our volunteers to do what you do. And our loss is their gain and you have a new mission, you have a legacy here, and I know it will continue with all of the people who love and support you as well. So I wish you the very best, and on behalf to be official, on behalf of Mayor Mitchell, I am honored to read the official resolution. Be it hereby known to all that the city of New Bedford, Massachusetts hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to Major Skill and Beth Parkers in appreciation of your 11 years of selfless and dedicated service goodwill, and tireless commitment to the citizens of Greater New Bedford. The entire citizenry extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued good fortune. Given this day, the 3rd of June, Mayor John Mitchell. So again, thank you very much. Those of you who are accustomed to watching city council meetings on public access TV, I believe it's June 14th. June 14th, uh, majors, the Majors Parkhurst will be uh, presenting the prayer at city council and will be acknowledged then, but it's my privilege this evening to have Hugh Dunn, who's the ward counselor for here, right here on Hathaway Road. Hugh, if you'd come and bring greetings. So I have to uh, take a moment to talk about my experience with Salvation Army. Growing up, uh, Salvation Army, to me, was the place where my father would pick up wacky shirts and then my mother would return them. But uh, once I came to New Bedford, I got a little bit uh, more knowledge of the important mission of the uh, Salvation Army. And it's really an organization that uh, has done so much great work in helping people heal, helping clothe, helping feed uh, those in need. And that's what leadership is really about, is helping those in need and, uh, and assisting people getting back on track. And the years of work that you've uh, committed to this community is just amazing. You know, your next community is lucky, but you're leaving a legacy here that's really uh, really can't be uh, overstated. It's a beautiful night out, but you look 
the hall is packed, that's uh, indicative of the great impact that you've had. And so, uh, on behalf of the City Council, there's only one thing I can say, and it's thank you. Thank you for your great work, and best wishes going forward. Next, I'm um, very pleased to have uh, much of, if not all, I'm not sure how many is actually on the board, but the Salvation Army Board of Directors. Would you stand, all those that are part of that? Uh... Oh, I know there's more than that. Anita, you're on the board. All of you stand, you're on the Board of Directors. Susanna, you can make your way forward. Grateful for having you, you may be seated. Uh, on behalf of the Board of Directors, Susanna Neves, who's president of the board. Thank you. Well, they asked me to speak on behalf of the Salvation Army of New Bedford to thank them. How do you thank somebody for 11 years of their lives? Uh, it's very difficult. So thank you so much for 11 years of giving your love, kindness, and changing people's lives. I've seen them every day go up to people and change their lives with their kindness, their support, and their faith. And this is every day. They get up, they go to work, as we do, but they change people, which is something that we don't do. And I see this every single day, and I'm on the board which I don't do it every day. So I have to give you so much credit for that. Plus, working with them every single day, I'm gonna miss them, the board is gonna miss them, and I'm gonna miss you as being a friend. But the big thing that I wanna say is that we have our good days and we have our bad days. And the worst thing I've ever heard Major Gill ever say is, I'm gonna pray for you. That's the worst thing that has ever come out of his mouth. <laughs> Which is the truth. And that was on a very, very bad day. <laughs> so in behalf of the Salvation Army of New Bedford, and as of the board, we are going to miss you. You have some very big shoes left here for other people to fill, which they will never fill. And as my friend, I'm going to miss you terribly and the boys too. Thank you very much. Next we have a surprise guest. Um, one of the projects that is not quite as visible, Ferrand, close enough. The Massachusetts Director of Disaster Services for the Salvation Army, Chris. I've been working for the Salvation Army for about 10 years now, and so that whole time uh, I've had basically Gil in my life. And with the Salvation Army, you're always prepared somewhat to know that folks have to move on. It's part of the way the Army works. Pastors come, pastors go, they're there, they're not. It's, it's fine, I'm going to get emotional, and I don't. I wasn't, I wasn't even planning on speaking tonight. I just came to show up and give my support, and then they give me the mic. Um, but there's those few people that you do so much with them, you connect so much with them, you accomplish so much with them, that they kind of sneak into your life and they're basically like one of the legs of a tripod. And now, Gil and Beth have worked their way so much in my life, it's hard to think of them not being here with this job, uh, with this work, with this mission, with this ministry. Um, I think of, there's a thousand traits that I could say they're good for. We're all here because we know their attributes and their heart and their passion. In disaster services, uh, one of my early mentors said, it's, it's very, very hard to prepare for disaster, but it's even harder to explain why you did not. And it's always an uphill battle with disaster. Lives are full, people are doing things. You have being a pastor, being a father, being a husband, being a caseworker, doing everything. And then in the middle of it at two in the morning, there's a massive explosion. You have to get your clothes on and get in a canteen and head out and help other people when you're only cooking on two hours of sleep. There are certain traits and qualities. Um, and Gil has set the bar extremely high. And I've said some of this to him, but 
um, my boss, the territorial, so the New England director has actually said, Chris, before Gil goes, we need to set him down and you need to make a video and a book so that other people know how to do it right. There are 35 Salvation Army Corps in Massachusetts and there's some good and some great, but there's no one like Gil when it comes to disaster services. His willingness, his commitment, his availability, problem solving is huge. You never have what you need uh, probably even on hot dog day, believe it or not, there are probably challenges, but he figured them out. Um, and he's always been willing to figure out what to do, whether it's a tornado or an explosion or a bombing or a snowstorm. It's amazing that he's always the first one to call me to say, Chris, how can I help? No matter where it is, in state, out of state, Florida, uh, Maine, Vermont, it doesn't matter. Um, his heart and passion is something that can't be replaced. And he set the bar incredibly high. Um, and it's just a part of who he is and it can't be replaced. I think of the new canteen we got, uh, I, I, I have trouble keeping up with how much he's using it. I, I try and figure out, I wanna report, hey, this, you know, we're doing this, we're doing that, I wanna make my bosses happy, they keep sorting the department, they keep supporting us, and literally, there's a new way he's using it every single day. It's amazing his heart and passion for serving people with the assets and resources we have. He's a colleague, uh, he's been a teacher, um, he's been an example to me, I've learned things from him. Uh, but even most importantly and most special to me is he's been a friend. And that's not always something you get with folks you work with. You share, even as Christians, we can partner together, but you don't always open your heart to someone and have them open their heart to you. And that's what changes things so deeply. And Gil has been that to me, and I know I've been that to him. And it's been very, very special. So it's sad to see him go personally, professionally. And one other thing I want to say is spiritually. I know, I know we mentioned that. Um, when Gil says, Chris... My family's been praying for you. I know they have. Um, it's easy to say I'll pray for you. It's different when even without knowing that every day and every night when I'm going through a hard time, I know that he's praying for me. And so there are things I can say, thank you, Gil. Thank you, Beth. There are hundreds that I won't see till I get to heaven. Hundreds of things that he's done for all of our lives that we won't see until we see that whole banner and our spiritual eyes are open when we get to heaven. So there are good people. There are great people, but no one can replace Gill in my life and especially in my role with disaster services. But the thing I am pleased about, if I get out of my selfish way and put on my Jesus hat, which is hard to do sometimes, um, is knowing that he's going to build and grow something as special as he did here where he's going next. And so for the kingdom's sake, I'm excited. Personally, I'm sad. So thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. We move from disaster services to the Standard Times Neediest Families Fund. And if you saw this, uh, today's uh, Standard Times, there was an editorial, and that was by Beth Perdue. And if you saw Saturday's South Coast, you saw an article on Beth and Gill, and that was Deb Ryan, our religion editor. So these ladies are going to come, and they have a special presentation to make. Beth? Hi. So um, I got to know both majors, Parkhurst, um, somewhat unexpectedly when I became editor a couple of years ago. Um, neediest was um, in my awareness. Um, I wrote some of the stories for us previously, um, but I wasn't really part of how it worked or what it did for the community. Um, and uh, probably that first year you might have been a little worried. I didn't really know how it functioned and I, I might have slowed it down just a little bit, but um, Major Parkhurst didn't really blink and he was very kind and uh, uh, we made it work. And, um, and I think that's kind of how um, what we do uh, functions with the Salvation Army. Um, I got to know more about what happened through the newsroom staff and the building staff who worked with the Salvation Army and they came back every single time and their tones were just such awe and respect, right? And, and these are somewhat jaded, somewhat cynical uh, journalists that we're talking about and, and we sent staff there and they didn't just go and come back, they stayed there. Like during Neediest, they'll be there for the whole weeks, that applications. 
And every time they came back with more and more respect and more and more awe for what the Salvation Army does and for what both Major Parkers do there. And um, so it was so impressive to see and just uh, really eye-opening. And I couldn't, I have to say, we couldn't be more honored and um, more happy and privileged to support the work that you guys have done in this community. So thank you very, very much. And um, in that spirit, from our family to yours, we do have a gift for you. We sang a song about the clay, because we know that God is the potter and we are the clay. So it's very fitting that this bowl was made out of clay, crafted by a potter, and it's a giant soup bowl, so they'll never forget our soup bowl <laughs> suppers. Thank you, Beth and Deb. That was made here in New Bedford, was it not? Yes, it was. That's what I thought. Well, we have only five acknowledgments left. And just before I introduce our next one, I want to give you a heads up. We had announced in our invitation that we would be taking a love offering for moving expenses for Gil and Beth. And that will happen towards the end. And I just want to give you a heads up. We're going to do that. If you want to write a check, please just make it out to Gil and Beth Parkhurst. And uh, that way they can use it where they, need, where they see fit. Uh, tonight, it is my privilege to introduce to you Linda Silvera. She represents the Rotary Club of New Bedford. And Linda, would you come and share greetings with the Parkhurst tonight? Thank you. Thank you, Major Gill and Major Beth Parkhurst. Um, on behalf of the Rotary Club of New Bedford, it is a great honor and a privilege to award you one of our highest recognitions. It's called the Paul Harris Award. Uh, Paul Harris was the founder of Rotary. Uh, Rotary is the oldest service club in the world, in case you didn't know. I met the majors about 11 years ago when you first came to New Bedford, and um, uh, the Rotary Club does a little bit of work with the Salvation Army at Christmas time and ringing the bells and really just a, a small tip of the iceberg for everything that the, that the majors do here and uh, the Salvation Army does. There, there's not enough words to thank you for your tireless efforts and your devotion. It's, it, it amazes some of us lay people just the, the depth of your commitment, especially at this time um, when you're asked to you know, give the, one of the greatest sacrifices. I can't even imagine having to uproot my life and my family's life, but there's, we just have to hope there's a reason and no one can replace you here. They can just carry on your great works. You will be missed. And um, I wish I had the award here with us. We, we had, um, we got last minute notice of this and it does take a little while for the, um, for this honor, for the award to come in. The wheels of rotary move slowly sometimes, uh, unlike the majors here. But it, it is, again, my honor on behalf of the Rotary Club of New Bedford to present you with our highest award, the Paul Harris. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. There was one other uh, person that I did not get to connect with, and I don't know, is Daryl Sylvia here? Did he make it? No? Okay. So, that's one less. <laughs> David Lima, come and bring greetings from the Greater New Bedford Interchurch Council. So, so I, do I get that extra time? No, we're going to have hot dog day. Hot dog, hot dog day right after this. 
Hallelujah. Um, one of the things that happens when you're three, four, five, eighth person to speak to somebody is that most of it's already been said. But let me talk to not only you, but to you all, to all of us. When people are called to ministry, when people are called and take the calling serious, it's not just a vocation. And I'm not going to get modeling or anything else here, but it is, it is truly a life story. It is truly a mission that comes directly from God. And you have to believe that in order to be able to do what you two have done in this community, lay your lives down truly. God calls us all to do that, but not all do. You two have. Nobody lives in their church. You two do. Nobody answers the doorbell every time, every day, every week. You two do. You two have been there through the storms, through the good times, and most don't see you or even recognize you. You're not always out front unless it's the standard times looking for a party and they called it the Super Bowl <laughs> just so they could support you, but they were really looking for a party. That <laughs> Beth is a party girl, Tony. It's, it's the way it is. The thing is, is if they saw you on the street, they saw you working. They didn't just see you doing, you know, out, except I'll miss running into you at Davies Locker. I mean, I miss Davies Locker. As you say, that's how we got to know each other most of the time, you know? Yeah. The thing is, is that's what happens. And you, that it's the calling of God first. Because you do have your sons. You did make this community yours. You see the love that people have for you. But your love, as much as you love this community, and we know that, and as much as you always have us in your prayers and your memories, you love God first. And that's your first mission. And that's what makes you guys the wonderful people that you are. And that's what we will hold on to. We thank you for your service. We thank you for your time. Yes, there's big shoes to fill. And yes, there's places that you're going to bless but I know that the God that loved you enough and us enough to send you here will send somebody else also. They'll be different. They won't be you. But if they're following God like you do, they'll be a blessing to us. And we thank you. We are almost there. I'm going to invite my wife to join me on the platform. I'm not going to tell you, take too long and tell you a lot of personal stories. But these, this family has grown very close to us. Night after night, Gil would message me that Matthew and Zachary just said their prayers and they prayed for me. When I was in the hospital and nearly died, Gil came to me and he was my pastor. And they have built a lasting relationship and we will be together forever someday. And I think, Tony, I think you forgot. Did you say Telog? Till later. Yeah, he said ciao, that's right. Mrs. Helm represents Nazarene Christian Academy. She is our, she's my wife, but she is the principal of our school, and they have a presentation. I didn't realize that um, we would be presenting this to you here. Um, and don't panic, Beth. It's nothing that, that, it's very small. You can take it with you, and the boxes can be thrown away. But um, Mrs. Mrs. Kana doesn't realize that I got the boxes out of the attic and they're the ones that have the headsets and she might need to use those again. So just send them back with the boys tomorrow. 
Um, Beth and Gil are the real deal. I am telling you that my husband and I have been in ministry a long time, and they are the real deal. That has been amazing to see and to watch. And the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, because when you deal with their boys at school, what am I getting? Respect, kindness, genuine gratitude. Uh, they both have, have been on the, the honor rolls and uh, the um, perfect attendance awards. This comes from the parents. Because, you know, school life is funny. I've been doing that. <laughs> yes. Amen. I've been in school life for over 30 years. And it's so funny that parents want to argue with me. Oh, they never do that at home. Never. Really? They just come to school and start acting out. No, your boys emulate what you have taught them. And <laughs> they are a treasure. And you are a treasure, too. Um, when I think of you, uh, John and I talk at home about your endless energy and endless passion. It's, it's just been quite the thing to study, to observe, and to take in. And, um, you know, Mother Teresa told us uh, to do small things with great love. And you do that. We witness it. And it, it trickles. It goes so far. You have no idea how far it goes. But what a privilege it has been and an honor to grow with you. Um, we can play with you and, f and have fun with you. And that's been very special for John and I. We have been able to be real people uh, with you and a real family. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I uh, gave John on our 40th, let's see, 30th, I know how long we've been 30, 30th wedding anniversary. I gave him a keychain that was two little puzzle pieces and they clicked together um, because I have a tendency to give keychains to people that I really love. And uh, you have a keychain, Beth. And you have a keychain, Gil, from NCA, so that every time you start that truck or that car, you will know that we love you and that we're thinking of you and we're praying for you. All right. God bless you in your new venture. Did Renee Ribeiro get back from... Her other function. Has anybody seen Renee? Renee, come up and join me, please. Mm -hmm. Renee is my missionary president from our missionary society here at, the, at First Church, and uh, we have a presentation that we want to make to Gil and Beth Ellen. <laughs> I never called you Beth Ellen ever, <laughs> but he does. And um, in in our denomination, which is one of the th reasons I highlighted uh, Psalm 130 th 133, over the years, it's, it's, it seems it's been um, not the norm. David, you know what I'm talking about. It's hard to get people together. It's hard to get people to work together. And so we thought the, perhaps the highest honor we could, sh we could give Gil and Beth uh, tonight would be an honor that's bestowed by our denomination from one denomination to another denomination. And it's called a Distinguished Service Award, and, and they, are, they are awarded by the local church. There are some strict parameters on who you can award them to. You pay a certain uh, fee, and that money is gathered. And every year around the world, churches of the Nazarene give Distinguished Service Awards. And it's, say 10,000 churches a year give a Distinguished Service Award. It's $1.25 million that goes and supports the missionary health care. Church of Nazarene has 850 missionaries around the world in 160 countries and uh, global access areas. Those are places we can't even name that we are in because of the safe, for the safety of the missionaries. 
and um, they have to have health insurance. It's expensive. But by churches acknowledging service, we are able to pay that health insurance every year for over 850 career missionaries. And so you are now a part of that as well, Gil and Beth. And so, Renee, I'm going to have you present it. I'm going to read it. It's the Distinguished Service Award, New Bedford, Mass. First Church of the Nazarene takes pleasure in presenting this certificate to Majors Gill and Beth Ellen Parkhurst with great thankfulness for your 11 years of compassionate and sacrificial service to God and the greater New Bedford, Massachusetts community. May you be blessed as much as you will be missed. Right. sit down. <laughs> I'm going to invite the ushers to prepare. We're going to get, do that love offering. Uh, worship team, if you would come and uh, prepare to uh, lead us in worship. After we take the offering, we're going to have Gil, Beth, and the boys come down here and stand in the middle in the front. Those who would like to come, we're going to lay hands on them and have a sending prayer for them. And at the end of the prayer, we will not only uh, have a benediction, but a blessing. We have uh, dessert for 300 people in the gym and a Sunday bar. Come and make your own Sunday with all the fixings. And there is also on their table, there's a basket. If you brought a special, special card or gift that you wanted to give to them personally, you can do that in there as well. So... Just before you go down and pray. Let's pray. Father, bless us as we give. Father, it's such a privilege to share in the work of the kingdom. These who have given so much, Father, we can't even begin to give in return to what they have given. But Father, help them and provide for them and all of their needs during this transition. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just before we have a prayer of sending over Gil and Beth and the boys, uh, Gil has asked if he and Beth can say a few words. Now, my quick question is, do I have two to three minutes? <laughs> you have one and a half. All right. <laughs> when I get the microphone, right, sometimes they have to go like this because now I'm in charge up here. So, and I just sit down, enjoy it for, for a few moments. <laughs> here, you can sit here for a moment. Uh, 11 years ago, um, I sat in my office in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, and we received the call that we were being transferred. Um, and I had to wait because the divisional commander where we were going would be calling us to let us know where we were going. So I had no clue we were going for maybe another hour or so. And I'm talking to my wife, what's going on? Where are they sending us, you know? And then they called us and they said we'd be going to New Bedford, Massachusetts. Now, I grew up in Massachusetts, in Haverhill, just north of Boston, and my wife is from Peabody. 
Um, so we knew a little bit, but not too much. And then, shortly after I received that call, I was wondering what was going on because the former divisional commander in Massachusetts called me. And he said, I understand you and your wife are going to New Bedford, Massachusetts. I said, yes. He said, all I want to say is I'll be praying for you. <laughs> and just the way he said it made me wonder, what am I getting into? And I found out why he was praying for me, <laughs> because we really needed it. And we thank God for the many blessings that he has given to us uh, over the years here. Whether it was working with this, you know, the neediest family fund or with the servathon or with the school, um, God has truly blessed us with the partnership together. I remember the first day, and, and I'm going to get in trouble later for this, that I brought my son to this school not knowing what it was about. And he was just a little guy, and he's like, I'm not going. <laughs> and he fought, and he fought. And Mrs. Costa says, you just give him to me, and I'll take care of him. And I knew at that moment that I wasn't going to argue with her. <laughs> uh, I knew who was in charge. And from that moment on, um, just the love and the relationship that we have um, with NCA and with First Church just blossomed. And it's more than just bringing our kids here. It's more than just doing the hot dog and the donut day, which we have a brief about this big. And it does say in the brief that the new guy must do the hot dog day and the thing. And the only way, the only way I got to do that and to use the truck was I had to list it as a disaster services training day. So if you ever talk to anybody from headquarters, don't call it hot dog day, call it disaster services training day. So that way there I won't get in trouble, all right? But the, the greatest blessing is to know, you know, how we have been allowed to pray with you. I know many days standing out here waiting for our kids and we'd share some of the needs and concerns and people would ask us to pray for their families and we'd ask them to pray for us. And we knew that the prayers were being sent out and God was answering prayers. And we thank you for, and we're gonna miss that. You know how God has blessed us with those. When my wife had to go into the hospital, I was a wreck and I dropped the boys off. Um, I got back from the hospital that morning at 5.30, had to get the boys going. I, I pulled up and I was the wreck. I went into the office and I didn't even say much. But I don't know if Mrs. Helm remembers this, but she just hugged me and hugged me and hugged me. She knew that I needed that at that moment. And that's, that's what it's all about, you know, showing God's love in practical ways. In the Salvation Army, you know, sometimes it's not easy when they say we have to move. But as Pastor Lima shared, it's what God has called us to, and we have to answer his call. Um, we know someone's coming. They're not going to replace us. We don't ask God to do that. They're going to carry on the mission that God has given them here in New Bedford. So as you have prayed for us, we ask you to pray for them and for their ministry. But don't give up praying for us. We're not going to give up praying for you every night and every morning. Um, we'll continue to do that. All right. So thank you for the love you shared for us. And we pray God's blessing upon each of you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Would you thank Beth and Gil this evening? Zachary and Matthew, would you join your parents? If I could have my two associates, Pastor Andrew, Pastor Tim, join me. David, I don't know if you have time, but if you if you come join us, any any clergy here tonight, I want you to come first to lay your hands on them. Stand right here in the middle, guys. Right here in the middle. Once the clergy have gathered and lay hands on them, youth, friends, friends of the boys, you're all welcome. Whoever wants to come lay hands, the aisles will, aisles will fill, but that's okay. You come right ahead. We do this a lot in our church. Don't be afraid. Just come right ahead, reach out, lay hands on these fine folks. It's a prayer of sending. 
Part of being the church is that we, are those, we send out. God raises people up, trains them, prepares them for what he has next. It's part of the discipling process. It's part of the growth pangs. The pain we feel when we're called to be separated for God's purposes. Let's bow our heads and let's go to our Heavenly Father tonight. Father God, we are uh, so grateful for these lives that have been shared with us. And we will miss them something awful. But God, there are people in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania that need to know the love of Christ. And you have divine appointments for Gil, Beth, for Zachary, and for Matthew. Divine appointments with people who don't know you yet and don't know your love and don't know your mercy and don't know your grace. There are people who live in great need everywhere we go and the need will never, there will never be an end to that need. But Father, you call out workers And you have called, and Beth and, and Gil have said, yes, Lord, wherever you want us. Wherever you place us, whatever you give our hands, we will put our hands to the task. And so, Father God, we are sending them tonight because we know that you know. We know that we do not know what you know. And that you always have plans for a future and a hope, not for calamity, not for hardship. But Father, for your purposes, for your design and for your desire. So Father God, tonight we just lift Gil and Beth and Zachary and Matthew before you. We raise up our voices, we raise up our hearts, we raise up our hands, Lord God, to you. We are yours. We are your children. We are your servants. And so, God, we are so thankful that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And that you always have plans for your children. So, Father, as they go, uh, yes, from our town, from our city, from our immediate being able to see each other and say hi, but there has been a heart connection that will last for eternity. They will always be brother and sister to me, even as they are always son and daughter to you, Lord God. And we praise your name. We praise you that you are God and that you do all things well, that you have more than enough, more than enough for Gil and Beth and the boys, more than enough for those who remain here to carry on the work, more than enough for those who will replace them. And we praise your name, for you do all things well. And we ask you now, God, go with them. Even as we release them and send them, Lord God, may the people who are there be ready to receive them, to open their hearts, open their minds and their spirits to the ministry of this family. And we will be careful to give you praise, give you thanks, and give you glory in all things, because it is already yours. And we love you tonight, Lord God. Love this family for us. Care for them for us. When we can't be there, be there for them. For you have promised to never leave us or forsake us. And we thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Our worship team is going to sing one last song. We're going to escort Gil and Beth into the gym. We ask you, come follow us. Come in and fellowship. Have, a, have something to drink. Have something to eat. Come and just enjoy getting to, the, to getting to them and greeting them and loving on them. To the suffering and the weak, to the ones the world has cast aside, where you want me, I will be. I will go. I will.
will go, I will go, Lord, send me to the world, to the lost, to the poor and holy. Take everything I am, I'm paying with in your hands. I will go, I will go, send me. Let me not be blind with privilege. Give me eyes to see the pain. Let the blessing you poured out on me not be spent on me in vain. Let this life be used for change. I will go, I will go, I will go, Lord, send me to the world, to the lost, to the poor and hungry. Take everything I am. I'm clear within your hands. I will go, I will go, send me. I will go, I will go, I will go. 